The way I prefer to do it is a little easier than that, a little lazier, maybe not quite as effective, but it works fine for me. So what I'll do is I'll just take my fertilizer here and just sprinkle. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Saturday, December 13th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're going to talk about how to grow the biggest and best solar panels for your onions. So this is kind of a follow-up video to our last video where we talked about some different onion fertilization programs and how recommendations may differ a little bit depending on your situation, your soil type, whether you're growing in ground or in containers or raised beds. And we gave you a nice little onion fertilizer decision chart to help you decide what you should do. But on this video, we're going to focus specifically on the nitrogen part of the equation, which as we talked about in the last video, pretty much any source you look at out there recommends giving onions a high nitrogen fertilizer. And no, we're not promoting some type of clean energy agenda on this channel. I'm not willing to take a stance on solar panels either way. But I do think it is a really good analogy to understand how onions grow. So if we think of these onion leaves as solar panels, it will help people understand the onion growth cycle. The more leaves we have and the larger those leaves are, the more solar panel surface area we have when these things start bulbing. The more sunlight these leaves can absorb, the bigger the bulb they can produce. And that's why trimming your onion leaves as the plants are in the ground growing makes absolutely zero sense. That would be like going on a solar panel plot and just bulldozing half the solar panels out there. Why would you want to reduce the energy you're able to absorb? So when we think of those onion leaves as solar panels, we understand, okay, we got to grow as many leaves as possible and need those leaves to be as large as possible. Because when the day length hits a certain length, those onion plants are going to stop all vegetative production. At that point, we have grown all the solar panels we can grow. Now they're devoting their energy into enlarging that bulb. So how do we get big solar panels and as many solar panels as possible? Well, the way you do that is with nitrogen. That's why all the onion growing guides you find online say to hammer your onion plants with nitrogen. That's what's going to give you all those solar panels you need. But there are lots of different nitrogen fertilizer options out there on the market. So many that it could be quite confusing, especially for the beginner garden. So let's go through some of those options, both synthetic and organic. And then I'll show you how we apply nitrogen to our bulbing onions here in a minute. But before we get into our list of fertilizer options, let's just broadly compare synthetic nitrogen options versus organic nitrogen options. So in general, the synthetic nitrogen fertilizers are going to be the cheapest option out there and they're going to work the fastest. Now let me clarify what I mean by cheapest because this may not be the case for everybody. Down here in South Georgia, you can find a farm store, a feed and seed store, usually at least every 15 miles. And you can go buy a bag of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer for pretty cheap. Now, if you live in an area where you don't have local feed and seed stores or local farm stores and you're just having to order this stuff online, it may not be as cheap. There may not be as big of a gap there in the synthetic cost and the organic cost. But I'm just thinking about what we have to deal with down here, what we have available to us down here. So for the amount of nitrogen or the percentage of nitrogen that you're getting per bag of fertilizer, the synthetic options are going to almost always be cheaper. But those synthetic fertilizers can create a higher cost down the road, not in terms of money, but in terms of your soil health. So if you continually hammer your garden with high nitrogen synthetic fertilizers over time, there can be some harmful effects to your soil. You can have some salt accumulation. You might damage some of your soil biology. So just something to be mindful of there. So that's what you're getting if you go synthetic. If you go organic, you're going to be getting a much lower percentage of nitrogen for your dollar, but you don't have to worry as much about your soil health long term. So it's important to know what you're getting there when you're buying this nitrogen fertilizer. I'm not telling you to go one way or the other. Just understand what you're getting when you're buying synthetic versus what you're getting when you're buying organic and why one is typically cheaper than the other. So let's go through some of these synthetic nitrogen options and we'll start with the one that probably has the highest percentage of any nitrogen fertilizer you'll find out there on the market and that is urea, usually a 4600. 
So urea is cheap, it's fast, you're getting almost 50% nitrogen there, but you gotta be a little bit careful with it because you can get some salt accumulation over time. You gotta be careful getting it on the leaves because something that high in nitrogen could burn your leaves. But if you wanna give something a quick pop, you can definitely do it with some 4600. Then you've got ammonium nitrate, which is 3400, and this one is also pretty easy to find. So just like the urea, this one's gonna work really fast. And a lot of times you can find this in a liquid form as well. So if you're fertigating your onions as opposed to sprinkling granular fertilizer, you can use some liquid ammonium nitrate and get it right where you want it. Then another synthetic option is ammonium sulfate. So this is ammonium plus sulfur. Now sulfur is what helps give onions that nice little spice or bite. So if that's something you like with your onions, adding a little extra sulfur in the form of ammonium sulfate can help you accomplish that. So the ammonium sulfate is 2100. You're getting about half as much nitrogen per pound as you would with the urea, but if you need that extra sulfur, ammonium sulfate is a good option. Gotta be careful not adding too much sulfur to your soil because it can lower the pH over time. So if you're using a lot of ammonium sulfate, probably do wanna get some soil tests, make sure your pH is not falling out of that optimal range. And the last synthetic option I'll mention is calcium nitrate. That's 15.500. And this one may be the best option out there for just the home gardener growing a couple rows of onions. So with the calcium nitrate, you're not worried as much about soil acidification like you are with the ammonium sulfate. Also, having some extra calcium there does tend to improve bulb quality. And depending on where you're shopping, you can usually find granular along with water-soluble versions of calcium nitrate. So if you want to fertigate it through an injection system, you can do that. Just make sure you buy the water-soluble calcium nitrate. There are also granular forms out there that you can sprinkle alongside your onions and side dress. So those are the most common synthetic options out there as far as high nitrogen fertilizers go. Now let's talk about some of the organic options you can find. So number one would be blood meal. This is 1200 and this is just dried animal product ground up. If you've ever used it before, you know just how fine it is. So for an organic source of nitrogen, blood meal can work relatively fast compared to other organic options. The issue I have with blood meal, it's so fine, it's really hard to apply unless it's on a day where there's no wind out there. You gotta be careful because it's really dusty and it's hard to apply it without getting right there on the ground. If you're just doing a raised bed, I could see where it would be fine, but I've used it in my in-ground garden before and it kind of just blows all over the place. But it can be an effective organic nitrogen source and I've also heard other people say blood meal works for deterring some animals and pests around your garden so if you've got critters getting in your garden all the time you may want to do a little more digging into using blood meal then the second organic option is feather meal this is also a 1200 fertilizer now unlike the blood meal which can be relatively fast for an organic nitrogen fertilizer the feather meal is pretty slow release so as the name suggests, this is just ground up poultry feathers and feather meal tends not to have any odor like blood meal can have. So the feather meal is going to give you a much longer sustained release of nitrogen. It's not going to give your plants a quick pop. It's going to be a much slower release. Doesn't work near as fast as other options out there. It also tends to work pretty slow the cooler your soils are. So something to take into consideration when you're going to be growing your onions based on your climate. If you're growing them through the middle of winter, feather meal may not work that great for you because it doesn't mineralize well in cool soils. And then a third organic option would be your fish emulsions. Now you got to watch what you're buying here because not all fish emulsion based fertilizers are high nitrogen. For example, this AgriThrive that we like to use here, this is fish emulsion plus corn steep liquor. You can see this one has a 335. I wouldn't call this high nitrogen at all. But there are some fish emulsion fertilizers. They're like a 522 or you may find some with even more nitrogen than that. So the liquid fish emulsions can work relatively fast for an organic fertilizer and a lot of people find those easier to use or easier to apply. So instead of sprinkling a granular fertilizer alongside the plants and then incorporating it into the soil a little bit with the liquid stuff, you're just mixing up a solution in a five gallon bucket and pouring it right alongside your plants. It usually hits the plants a little quicker to already being dissolved in a liquid form. And in general, those fish emulsion fertilizers tend to promote some pretty good soil biology. So that's an added benefit of using those as well. 
And then the fourth organic option out there would be just some good old manure-based compost. Now you gotta be a little bit careful with manure-based compost. You wanna make sure they've had some time to age or cook a little bit. You go adding fresh manure to your garden where you're growing onions. There's some health risks associated with that. And also it can create some anoxic soil if you put too much fresh manure in one particular spot. But if you've got some composted manure that's cooked down a while, nice and aged and refined, you can certainly use that. The problem with the composted manure, it's not going to be super high in nitrogen. It's going to have some nitrogen in it. I don't know that you could rely on that composted manure completely for all your nitrogen that your onions are going to need, but it could definitely be used as a supplement. So if you have some composted manure on hand, you produce your own, you can use that and that will keep you from having to buy or use as much additional nitrogen. But the chances that you're going to be able to rely on that completely for all your nitrogen, I don't know about that. So there's eight different options for you, four synthetic, four organic, and amongst all those, you should be able to find one of those that you can use on your onions. The fertilizer I use right here is a 1300. This actually has blood meal and feather meal in it and a little bit of ammonium-based nitrogen. So I like this one because I get a quick pop, but it's also got that feather meal in it that's going to give me some nice slow release as well. So we talked about what to use. Now let's talk about timing because this is a question we get asked most often. When do I put it down? How often do I put it down? So for your first nitrogen application, I would say you want to wait about three to four weeks after transplanting or when you start to get that fourth or fifth leaf. You can see on these plants here, most of these have four leaves, if not five leaves, and we're about three to four weeks away from when we transplanted these. So definitely ready to go, time to give these some nitrogen. And then as far as frequency goes, like I said, you want to hit them the first time about three to four weeks after you transplant or when you start to see four or five leaves on your onion plants. And then you want to hit them at least one more time, if not two more times, but you don't want to feed them after they start bulbing. So you'll see the soil cracking around those onion plants when that bulb starts to enlarge. You don't want to give them any nitrogen after that but you at least want to give them two applications within that vegetative phase so one three to four weeks after transplanting wait another three weeks or so give them one more round of nitrogen and just depending on when you planted and when they start bulbing you may have time for a third round there really hard to give onions too much nitrogen you're not going to hurt the onions you may hurt your soil a little bit so if you can squeeze in three applications you should be good to go. You'll grow some nice big onions. If you've only got time for two applications, that will probably be fine as well. I would go with at least two though. So now let me show you how we feed our onions with this 1300. Give you a little demonstration on side dressing with a granular nitrogen fertilizer. Not going to use a liquid today. That's really, really easy. You're just pouring it alongside the plants. But granular is a little bit different because we do want to incorporate it into the soil a little bit. Now one way to do this is to actually bury your nitrogen fertilizer in a little trench or a little furrow alongside your onion plants. Now I'm going to do this with my hand, but you can do this with a hand hoe. You can do this with a wheel hoe. You could do this with a tractor or tiller with certain attachments, but you'll get the idea here just doing this with my hand. So you'd make a little furrow like that alongside your onion plants. You don't want to disturb the roots too much there. Make a little furrow a few inches deep and then you just sprinkle your fertilizer in that furrow there and then come back along cover it up just like that now the way i prefer to do it is a little easier than that a little lazier maybe not quite as effective but it works fine for me so what i'll do is i'll just take my fertilizer here and just sprinkle it right alongside the row there and then i'll take this little three tine cultivator here and just kind of lightly scratch it into the soil not getting as deep as we would if we would have made a little furrow but deep enough this always seems to work pretty well for me so there's quite a few different nitrogen options out there synthetic or organic and there's several different ways to apply them as i just showed you there so pick one and give it to your onions at least two times during the vegetative phase. That's going to help you grow those nice big solar panels that you're going to need for some really big bulb production. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And if you've got other nitrogen sources that you like to use on onions, please do share those in the comments below. And if you missed our last video where we talked about why you may need to add a little potassium as the onions grow, you can watch that right here. We'll break that down and go through that fertilizer decision chart. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.